Hey guys, welcome back to Prepared Mindset. Got another gear video for you today. Gonna be going over my JPC uh, duty setup, if you would, that I use uh, in the military. Um, kind of going into the why on this. I, uh, I So far I've done uh, six years in the infantry and have done my time with the issued IOTVs. I had a Gen 1 or Gen 2 MSV um, in uh, like 2019 to 2022. It was better than IOTV, TV, but it was the same um, kind of military mindset, what you're seeing in Ukraine a lot. Lots of soft, soft armor, not that great to shoot in, even worse to walk in. Um, so going into the National Guard, we have more freedom on what we're allowed to use and bring. Um, so the JPC has kind of been the gold standard for years on uh, slicker, still duty uh, rigs, and uh, wanted to give it a try. So here's my JPC 1.0 if I cry. So I'm a radio guy uh, in my company uh, and my whole existence isn't so much to be up front with a bunch of ammo or frag grenades. I basically just carry radios around and keep radio traffic coming and going through the loop. Um, just started doing that this year. It's actually, I was kind of intimidated by it. I never loved being on the radio. Had uh, some experience on them working in vehicle crews when I was on active duty but never loved to be in the spotlight like that and uh, was never a platoon level RTO so getting thrown into the company role was definitely an adjustment but after my last JRTC rotation I actually kind of dig it you get to sort of be in charge of yourself and your equipment work with the other platoon RTOs and uh, kind of get to be on the inside when it comes to mission planning get to be there for the battalion op orders company op orders, briefs, stuff I never saw on the enlisted side from a lower enlisted perspective. So it's kind of cool. I dig it. Radio etiquette is fun. Um, and there's always stuff to learn. So this rig specifically, you'll notice this isn't as cool guy Instagram stuff you see up here, but I have my X check, basically radio etiquette changes permission. So keeping an updated list of what certain terms mean without getting too much into the operational security side of it. I've also got um, unit specific call signs in case I draw a blank in the heat of the moment. That's why that's there. Um, during JRTC, we were pretty much exclusively in chest rigs. So I had my TAPS rig with the front pouch kind of set up the same way. Just real quick, I can grab it and stow it back away. I'll take it away because it's kind of an eyesore for the rest of the video. But right at the top, JPC has got this nice little admin pouch that's got some bungees in there so you can keep uh, extra batteries, mission essential gear. If you were a team leader, your whistles, your signaling devices can fit up here. It's not bad at all. You can tie them down inside these elastic loops that you don't lose them. Navigation gear too would be great up here. We have AXL shoulder pads. It was recommended by a guy online to get these and they're pretty awesome. They're a little wider than the standard pads, but when you start, I wouldn't say I've overloaded this thing, but I'm really damn close. There's guys you hear say the JPC should never be loaded down more than like your slick three mags and whatnot. Like it's a pretty rigid carrier for what it is. We'll get into the cummerbund, but definitely the stress points are going to be this um, material. I don't even know what the heck this is called. It's kind of space magic to my monkey brain. It's kind of a rubbery leathery feeling. It's all synthetic, but it's pretty strong. You do see over time that this wears out and gets a little stretched out. So loading it down the way I did, these structural shoulder pads um, do help a ton and honestly make it feel like a different carrier um, compared to the standard. So the JPC is super simple. There's no real padding on the inside like you get with other carriers like the ABS, um, the Faro, some of the equivalents. It's kind of just right up against your plate. So speaking of plates, I have HESCO. M210s in here. Um, this is a large JPC, real quick backstory. Ordered it from RMA Defense with their level four plates bundled um, last year. And the RMA plates, they sized it for a large with their plates and they just swam around in there a little bit more. I wasn't a huge fan of the the fit of their plates and they were just heavy plates too. Not, not great for the JPC design. So these HESCO plates are sappy cut, but they are thinner like the L210s. They're I think half inch plates. So ideally, in the future, gonna upgrade those plates and get an actual sappy cut to fit this guy perfectly. But these M210s do work really well. They're slick and they're pretty light. So I do dig them. So that's the top half. You'll notice before we talk about all the fun stuff on the front, I do run a slick back. Being the radio guy, I obviously need to carry around way too much bullshit. So running 
something like the issued assault pack is not super sexy, but that slick back will interface pretty well with uh, the back of my carrier, and I can carry mission essential gear, water, radio, batteries, and just have such a fun time carrying it all around everywhere I go. It's really not as bad um, as I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't hate rucking. I'm actually pretty good at rucking, but the assault pack situation with the radio really wasn't too bad. And the issued assault pack, I honestly like them a lot. If you are looking for something simple that you don't care, you beat the shit out of it. The issued assault packs are actually pretty great. They work well as shooting bags too. If you just throw back panels have their place, right? I've just never. It's not my realm. Um, infantry side, you really don't see them get used that much on the conventional side. Um, once you start running bangers and whatnot, maybe it makes more sense. But that's just ain't that just ain't me, bro. So um, slick back, simple in vehicles. Throw the pack on top of it with everything else I need. Cool. We have a high vis front flag here. Um, mission dictates whether or not I'm going to run this, but as a default working in the city, if I had to throw this thing on during an emergency, I like the high vis good guy symbol it gives off, right? Especially if I'm in uniform, looks super clean and professional, but simply just tear it off. Um, sorry for your ears here. You got some molly behind here, so you can also add pouches or name tapes, whatever identifiers. If I was a team leader or something, I'd probably put a grenade pouch on front. I know it's not super sexy, but... Um, the grenade pouch up front usually is a unit SOP for at least team leaders to always have a way to carry a grenade pouch um, on their body as well as all their magazines. But probably that new Spiritus Spud grenade pouch would be a really, really nice addition up front. So radio side. Right now using the Peltor, um, just because it's what I have, I haven't really had a chance to play with these specifically yet. In a JRTC I had the Dogbone hand mic because I was running an ACH, I didn't use my Peltors, and they work. Honestly, the, hand, the Dogbone hand mic is actually one of the probably best electronic conventional devices. They're super durable. Um, uncomfortable as hell to wear, kind of a pain in the ass because they're outdated, but they're actually really durable. The Peltor ones, I have two of them that came with uh, my headset. I have dual comms, so supporting that right now with an HRT uh, radio wing um, could probably jam a 152 in there but looking to upgrade to the Pharaoh Wingman who that has two full-size radio pouches, one for each side. So if I wanted to run dual comms, I can simply attach the second one to this roll of molly. Have two push the talks right here. A little bulky. Would love to do a Disco 32 down the road, but I have these. No reason to really switch them out because I have them. So and I got some trauma shears behind my mag pouch that is sported by the HRT. A uh, little trauma shear insert, a little piece of Velcro. It's just a little nicer to re-index and put them back in, just have some retention in there um, versus just slipping them in with the Velcro, you know. So I'm really running the bone stock uh, cry mag pouch here. I've seen the plastic inserts, kind of like the Kiwis, S-Tac, um, to give it some rigidity. I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I just haven't bought it. haven't really felt the need for this mission set. Um, and I have seen that they do wear out uh, the actual pouch on the carrier over time or the plastic will rub. So I just haven't done it. I haven't really felt the need to. Um, and then up front, we're sporting Blue Force Gears, little uh, elastic placard, if you would. It's barely a placard. It just literally mollies right on. I got this on tax swap for like 15 bucks. Had a team leader back in the day. Ran this on his main carrier and just loved how they collapsed down. You'll see a lot of new placards on the market, like the one Austin runs. I think the Onward Research and the, the Haley Strategic are traditional buckle-in placards, uh, and then they'll have elastic up front. So this sort of serves the same uh, purpose. Nothing open on the bottom, but I can jam those other mags in there if I need to have those 7 mag unit SOP on me. Um, I can jam a tourniquet in there if I want to have extra shears, multi-tool, signaling devices, chems, whatever. Um, can go in here pretty well. I like to keep them uh, slick as much as I can just to keep the integrity, integrity of that elastic. So that's the front, nothing super sexy. Um, we'll start on this side of the cummerbund. Um, before I talk about what's on it, the actual cummerbund actually surprised me. It has some sort of Tigris type material weaved into the Molly, which I did not know. I had only really seen JPCs from afar 
before I actually got one, and then I've seen the knockoffs that do not have this, and the cummerbunds are so loose, and they just feel so cheap. These cummerbunds actually come with this rigid material on the inside of each piece of molly. So that gives it structure that I was really surprised. So it can carry the weight of these things, and it feels really good, and it doesn't have any extra space that's kind of unneeded. You get airflow, everything, all the benefits of less material, right? So I have an issued double mag pouch, which they kind of suck. They work, they're cheap, but they kind of suck. If you run P mags, you can only really fit one. Um, I want to get the spud uh, double mag pouch, GP pouch from Spiritus down the road to replace this guy and maybe even put on the other side, we'll see. I know John runs and when you see his FCPC video down the road, he has the, the spud pouches and they're, they're really nice. I do like the little bit of camo they add as well. So have that here, grab it on my uh, support side, doesn't get in the way of my draw on my right side because uh, you know, I'd rather keep all those mags extra bulk if I double mag up on the support side rather than the, the strong side. Have an issued, I don't even know the name of this uh, IFAC. It's kind of the more high speed one that you see. They're okay. It's got the issued Molly snaps against that like to pop out like the canteen pouch does, but it stays on, right? I got this on Venture Surplus, super cheap. Um, I just didn't want to use the traditional issued IFAC because they just stick out more, having this one a little slicked out more. And screw it, we'll open it up for the video. I haven't opened this up since I since I set this guy up. You can pull either side, thing comes right out. I wonder if this is probably Eagle, I would guess. Uh, <laughs> glove, eye shield. So I don't have all the pieces, I don't have the eye shield or the gloves, but. Double chest seal, combat gauze, NPA, I don't have an NPA in here, I failed as an infantryman. Got some mini shears, again, which I could probably repurpose to another rig now that I have the bigger shears on the front. Good thing I opened this. Israeli bandage, nothing too crazy, pretty minimal, um, but it does sit pretty, pretty flat in there, which I do like. We should normalize guys pulling their IFAX out and seeing what's actually in there, because nobody ever does it, and I guarantee you, your medical is probably expired at this point if you've done this for a while. Switch out your medical. I'm guilty. Though this is new stuff. Alright. Uh, these are the issued side plate pouches. They have soft armor, and then some actual side plates that I got from Austin. Um, he had them collecting dust, and he was like, I'm either going to shoot these, or you're going to put them on your JPC. So I tried it out. It works really well. There's soft armor built into these pouches as well. Um, took me a minute to size up where on the JPC I wanted it, but you just gotta kinda play with how it fits your body, where you should have your camera run adjusted, and then where it all lands once you tighten everything down. So just take the time to really dial that in. Don't just throw them on and never try it until you need it, right? Or right before you're about to step off and your team leader hates you. So side plates are important, um, especially with the frag. You got the soft armor protection in an infantry roll. Definitely, uh, definitely a requirement once you actually step out. So that's the the left side. We're gonna go over the right. It's pretty much copy paste, but we do have a tourniquet pouch. This is the North American Rescue. They work really well. They're super cheap. Also got this on Venture Surplus, probably on a stupid sale because they do sales all the time. Um, I sized it up a little bit higher so that I can grab it easily with my offhand. Wherever you place your tourniquets, guys. You want to always be able to reach them with both hands. I could have dropped this lower to make it more comfortable if I was going to draw a pistol, but it this has a protective shroud over top of the Velcro. I've had it sometimes where if the Velcro is sticking out just the right way and you're wearing short sleeves and you're drawing right up against it, I've actually like cut my arm open after a long range day um, rubbing against some hook Velcro. Not fun. But this protects it, so I do bump into it a little bit when I'm drawing, but I wanted to prioritize being able to grab it easily, so I, I run it up high like that. Same thing over here with the side plates. And then over here, new addition is this Nods pouch from Rain, made in America. I got this from Austin also. Austin comes in clutch. You, you have some friends that buy too much gear so that you can also uh, trade, try different things, right? Um, Custom Night Vision hooked us up. Got some RNVGs. They basically did a housing swap. Um, we're sponsored by Custom. It's no secret if you listen to the podcast. So I'll give I'll give them a little spiel 
on what they did for me, but basically sent them my PVS-14. Had an Elbit Green Foss tube in it, super clean. Um, they threw it into RNVG housing and then matched a green Elbit tube with it. And dude, these things, they're a little heavy, but running around with an ACH and a PVS-14 is not the lightest setup either, so my neck is kind of conditioned to it. So running a, a high cut helmet with these is no problem at all once you counterweight it properly. Um, they're tanky and I love it. I mean, you've seen me, I've run a freaking RIS-2 rail and durable optics. We love our durable optics. I just like to beat the crap out of stuff and not have to worry about it. Um, let my toddler play with these and he threw them across the room and they're fine. So this pouch is padded. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm assuming it's not that expensive. Austin sold it to me for like 20 bucks, but it does what it's supposed to do. Molly's right in. Padded pouch. Has a little battery holder for the 123s or AA's if you had a different uh, night vision device. And then clicks right in. So that lives there. Um, there's something to be said about keeping your nods on your body. I've heard Adam from Spiritus talk about this, and it's definitely true. I tried to keep them in an assault pack and free up space. Either keep water on you, prioritize that space for other things, or just free it up. And uh, during an FTX in the woods this summer, I wish I had my nods, and they were in the patrol base in my assault pack because I didn't want to take them on the little movement we did. Dumb. So um, if you're going to actually be doing some serious work, I recommend always keeping your nods on you. It's one of your most important sensitive items, obviously, besides your weapon. So that's really uh, not much left there, guys. Um, like I said, this can be tuned to your job, um, or these unit SOPs that I talk about, seven mags, um, certain level of armor, frag grenade versus radio prioritization, right, depending on your job, can also be um, elaborated over to the civilian side. So it's, I think it's, there's something to be said, paying attention to sometimes how the boring, not as high speed infantry guys get work done, usually with subpar gear, and they just make it happen. I think there's a lot to be taken from that, from the civilian perspective. So yeah, that's really it, guys. If you have... Uh, Anything to add in the comments if you think my setup's dog shit or why is it so clean? Have you even used the damn thing? Looking to change that, hopefully. If you like the JPC, let us know what your setup is. I got a couple guys in the group now that got JPCs that love them. Um, real quick, too, the 1.0 versus the 2.0. For a base grunt, the 1.0 is absolutely awesome. It comes with the placard all sewn in, so you can't change it, but it's a good system. So, and you can add these up front or molly something else on up front, and they work. Um, I think the 1.0 is still a really good value in 2024. Um, if you want placard compatibility with the clips or whatever, you want to run a back panel, you know, with the zippers. Um, you're just a regular civilian, you want to get that more high-speed stuff, or in your, you're in law enforcement and those type of attachments make sense to you, I would say probably get the 2.0. But really, it's, it's, it's down to what your mission is and uh, what you want to get done with it. So, appreciate you guys watching. Until next time. Joshua with the Prepared Mindset.